Revit exports rooms to IFC space entities, which are associated to a particular IFC building story. By default, Revit exports the following Revit properties to these associated room attributes. So by default, the name and the long name are exported from the Revit number and Revit name. I can also add or assign additional attributes using the IFC description parameter and the IFC object type parameter. The IFC description holds any additional information the user may have specified. There are no further requirements and the object type holds the space type, usually the functional category of the space. So I can see for this reception room, I have a department that is public. So I could place this in the object type parameter. And I have a comments property called main visitor space, which I could specify additionally in the IFC description. Parameter. I could then of course delete these values and then start to use the IFC description and IFC object type parameters for scheduling, graphical display and tagging. I'll now re-export the model and can see that this reception room now contains the object type and description attributes and values that I specified inside Revit. There is an additional attribute for the IFC space called elevation with flooring, which is the level of flooring of this space. An average that should be taken if the surface is sloping. Within the shared parameter file available as part of the IFC exporter download, there is a property or parameter called IFC space elevation with flooring. However, this parameter does not work and will not export the attribute and its value correctly. So what I've done is I have added another parameter to this shared parameter file called IFC elevation with flooring. And I'm now going to add that as a project parameter. So you will have to edit the share parameter file yourself in order to add this share parameter. Assign it to the rooms category. And for this reception room, I can now add a value of 19 meters or 19,000 millimeters. I can re-export the IFC and upon opening the IFC and selecting the reception room, I now have the elevation with flooring attribute assigned like so. Because rooms in Revit do not have a type in the same way that other elements such as walls, doors, floors have types, Revit will export an IFC space type as a concatenation of the Revit room name, the room number, and the element ID of that specific room element. If I wanted to override this IFC space type name, I can assign the IFC name parameter to the rooms category. I'll select the reception room and I will type in the same name as the Revit name. Re-export the IFC and I can see that the IFC space type name has been updated to the value of the IFC name parameter. 
It will also update the name attribute of the IFC space. Note that it does not appear to be possible to override the predefined type and the composition type values or attributes from within Revit. Just a note on these parameters. Obviously, I am now getting to the point where I'm starting to duplicate information within Revit to satisfy the requirements for the IFC output. Therefore, it's important to ensure that you use consistent parameter usage for your documentation to align with the IFC outputs. So for example, if you are using IFC name for reception, you must ensure that you do not use the name parameter within Revit, unless you have an automated process that involves updating this information across multiple parameters. IFC space entities also have property sets, such as the properties under PSET space common and PSET space coloring requirements. Note that there are some properties called floor covering, wall covering and ceiling covering. Revit has built-in parameters for the base finish, ceiling finish, wall finish and floor finish. And when exported to IFC, for the PSET space covering requirements, the floor covering, wall covering and ceiling covering are automatically exported and assigned to the correct property and property set. However, it's also possible to use the IFC parameters named as the IFC properties to export this data. So I can transfer the values from the built-in Revit parameters and then type in some thickness values and I have also added a couple of properties under the PSET space common property set which I will tick yes as they are boolean parameters Click apply and re-export to IFC and note that the space covering requirements have the properties under the property set and the space common property set has the is external and publicly accessible properties visible here. Revit will also export by default some of the space base quantities. However, it is possible to override the value of these quantities by adding a parameter into Revit. The quantities that are exported from Revit by default are based on the geometry of the room. If I go into my section 1, Notice that this reception room seems to be 4 meters, so I've incorrectly modeled this. So I can bring this down to 3200, and this will update the height quantity in the IFC export. I have now added another Revit parameter from the shared parameter file, the IFC quantity gross ceiling area, and I can manually specify this value based on the information I want to export. Note that because I'm manually overriding and specifying this value, it will not update should I change the Revit geometry, unlike the default export quantities from Revit. So just be aware if using this methodology that you would need a strategy to ensure that the areas are updated correctly prior to export. Back in the IFC, I can see there is a quantity added for gross ceiling area specified at the value that I manually typed in and the height of the space has been reduced to 3.2 meters. So that is how to export spaces from Revit rooms 
and assigning the applicable attributes, properties, and quantities.